Hi everyone, welcome back to Pack Your Nursing Minutes. I hope you all had a nice Easter. In this video, I will discuss the common IV opioids that are used after surgery in the recovery room. Now, let's get to it. Opioids and surgery. Now we can't talk about opioids without talking about the elephant in the country, which is the opioid crisis. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the band-aid off the wound and just go there. We have a national crisis at hand and we haven't even hit the tipping point in this crisis. So in December of 2020, the CDC released the data on the opioid overdose deaths for last year and we hit 81,000 deaths. Uh, in 2019, the opioid deaths was at 50,000. And just to put that into perspective, in 2019, our car accident deaths, they were at 38,800. We have a severe, severe crisis in this country. And a lot of it starts with a prescription after surgery. There was a retrospective study and that showed that if a patient had a prescription, one week after short stay surgery, they had a 44% chance of developing an opioid addiction at one year. This is profound. I thought even more about the crisis and about my personal experience as a nurse over the last 21 years. What have I seen? And it's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I've seen many, many patients with drug addiction on their history. Um, quite common, actually. Um, methadone use, suboxone use. Um, uh, but personally, I sat down and took inventory and I thought, how many people do I know who have either diverted, had a personal drug addiction? I came up with 11 incidents in 21 years. And I'm pretty sure that that is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there's more, I'm just not aware of it. Um, so we have a problem in the country and we need to address it. And through education and awareness and talking about it, that's how we're gonna to begin to address this problem. So I hope that this video helps shed some light on understanding these drugs, uh, the lethality and addiction of these drugs, and that they are reserved for hospital use. As a recovery room nurse, the goal for pain management is to give the smallest dose that will provide adequate pain control with the least amount of side effects. So I want you to constantly be thinking about that when you're going to the Pixis and getting those drugs. What can you give with the least amount of side effects? Because data has shown that the more the patients receive opioids in surgery and more opioids that they get in the recovery room, they're going to need a higher need of opioids post-op because of how many receptors get saturated. So it really starts with anesthesia and recovery. Opioid indication for pain management is reserved for acute pain that is associated with immediate injury and surgery during the immediate post-op phase to saturate those opioid receptors to suppress that immediate post-surgical pain. So remember, these are the patients who are seven, eight, nine, 10 out of 10 in pain. They're writhing and we've got to get it under control. This is not for your patient who is resting comfortably and you wake them up and there are three, or somebody who's eating jello and there are four. That is not who you're going to give opioids to. Now, I just want to remind you about our multimodal analgesia and our enhanced recovery after surgery pathways. The whole goal of all of these modalities is to minimize the amount of opioids that we give to our post-op patients. So remember, opioids is just a small drop in the bucket of what we're doing to help minimize that pain. And opioid sparing techniques, uh, this is giving other drugs to help minimize the amount of opioids that you need to give. And there has been some data collected. They found that Catorolac Toradol, which is your IV NSAID, that has shown anywhere to decrease opioid use anywhere from 9% to 66% pretty awesome. And then um, ibuprofen has been shown to decrease opioid need anywhere from 22% to 46%. So again, pretty good numbers here. Now, when we do talk about opioids, we need to understand that there are opioid receptors in the peripheral and central nervous system, the mu receptors, the delta receptors, and the kappa receptors. And that is what you are saturating when you give these drugs. 
Our common IV agents are fentanyl, dilaudid, demerol, and then morphine. So this is what your anesthesiologist will have ordered for your patient after surgery or your surgeon for pain management. So we're first gonna start with fentanyl. Fentanyl um, is extremely fast on its onset because it's lipophilic, so it can pass through the cell membrane quickly. It has an onset of three to five minutes. It peaks in 10 to 15 minutes, and it has a duration of two hours. Common side effects are respiratory depression, apnea, chest rigidity, where the patient says, I can't breathe, because it actually can help paralyze the intercostal and diaphragmatic muscles. So you want to be aware of that if you do have a patient who all of a sudden you give a dose and now they can't breathe. Uh, it's also, that is seen classically with a fentanyl overdose. And then post-op nausea and vomiting because it does trigger the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the medulla. And if you want to learn more about that, go back and watch my post-op nausea and vomiting videos on the pathophysiology. So fentanyl is indicated by the FDA for analgesia during anesthesia and for the maintenance and immediate post-operative recovery period. It is also reserved for the critically ill patient population. It has minimal hemodynamic effects, which is desired in that patient population. It's not going to drop their blood pressure as profound as, let's say, morphine or, or dilaudid. And it is a hundred times stronger than morphine. It is the strongest FDA approved drug that we have to give for pain. And so the equivalence of fentanyl, 100 mics of fentanyl is equal to 10 milligrams of morphine, which is equal to 1.5 milligrams of dilaudid, which is equal to 75 milligrams of Demerol. Now this next slide is about other fentanyls that are out there. And as a recovery room nurse, you should be knowledgeable of this. You won't be giving any of these, but I do wanna just briefly go over it. So starting at the very top, the most toxic, deadly, lethal, not ever for human consumption is carfentanil. This was um, derived for tranquilizers in animal use for like large elephants, rhinoceroses. It is absolutely deadly in, the, in humans and um, it's 10,000 times stronger than morphine. And unfortunately, this is the drug on the streets that when somebody takes a dose, they die. Uh, and it's usually related to carfentanil. It is a synthetic opioid. Next, we have remifentanil or Altiva. So this is an opioid anesthetic. Again, let me say that it's an opioid, not analgesic, but anesthetic and it is used for induction and maintenance of surgery. It has a very quick onset, one minute. It peaks in three minutes, and its half-life is three to 10 minutes. It is metabolized in the blood and the serum by esterase, hence why it's such a fast onset and then duration. Um, and it has a property where it does minimize bronchospasms and laryngospasms. So it is useful in anesthesia when you need to do bilateral bronch intubations for your thoracic surgeries. So you may see your anesthesiologist opt to use remifentanil on those pulmonary thoracic cases. And it's because of the uh, minimization of bronchospasm. It also um, is excreted by the kidneys and it is used in liver failure patients because it doesn't have any toxic metabolites because again, it's not metabolized by the liver, it's metabolized in the serum by esterase. So fentanyl is the next fentanyl that I wanna cover because you will see this used by anesthesia and this is for induction and maintenance of anesthesia. So that wraps up um, opioid and surgery and the common drugs that we give after surgery and my perspective. So if you felt like you got value added from this video, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues. And drop me a comment. I really would love to hear from you and find out what you're doing in your hospital. Thanks as always for tuning in to PACU Nursing Minutes. I'm Nurse Kathy.